What's going on Wolfpack? My name is Muddy Wolf and in today's tutorial we're going to be adding a menu to our top-down shooter. So let's just crack on with the video. So we're going to create a new scene and in the scene we'll call this menu. Now I'm going to double click this to open it up. We're also going to drop in a new sprite. So I have a background.jpg here. I'm just going to drop in. Now you'll feel, feel free to use any image you want. Uh, this image is 1920 by 1080p in case you're wondering. So pixels per unit, I'm going to put, I'm going to leave it at 100. It doesn't need to change. Uh, this can all stay the same. And to be fair, we could just turn off the compression to none for now. Click apply. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a UI canvas and this is just going to be our menu canvas. What we're going to do is over on the left here, we're going to change constant pixel size to scale with screen at 1920 by 1080. And we're going to set this to about 0.5 here. So there you go. That's looking good. So let's go to our scene. We can see our canvas right there. Um, and there we go. So let's save that. And let's just drag in our background. Well, let's create a new UI image. So we're going to create UI image. And we're just going to set this to set to the center and say... 1920 by 1080 and we're actually going to times this by 1.15 and we're going to times the same over here so this is about how we need it slightly bigger and that's kind of what we're going for so let's check the sprite and we're going to choose the background so in our game view this is what we're currently seeing which is really nice we're then going to add in a uh, we're just going to name this background and we're going to add in a new ui panel which I'm going to call it um, menu panel. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to set this to attach to the stretch to the right side. And the width is going to be about 480 pixels wide, which is looking good. Um, and I think, let's have a look in there. That should be all right. I think I like the little white on it. It's looking good. So inside here, we're going to create a new UI and it's going to be a button with Text Mesh Pro. Now it's going to ask us to import Text Mesh Pro. So I'm going to say import TMP Essentials. Once that's done, we can close that. And there you go. We've got a new button. Um, I'm going to rename this to Play Button. I'm going to set this position anchor to the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a width. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to stretch it the whole way across. Um, and I'm just going to give it a height of about 75. And we're going to give it a y about 120, oh, minus 120. I don't want it to be dead at the top. So there we go. So the color of the button is fine to be white, but the normal color. Sorry, actually, the color of the button needs to be transparent. So we're going to set that to be transparent. And then when we highlight this color, we should be able to um, give it a slightly darker color. So we're going to say about 200 200 200 um there and then pressed color will make it even darker we'll say 150 150 150 and that should be good i think so let's go to our t text here we're just going to say play button uh we're actually going to say play capitals we're going to give this a different font so we need to install a new font so on my machine i have um a font called Montserrat, not Montserrat, Fire Sands. Um, and I'm just going to get this. So I'll show you what I'm doing in a second. Let me just move back here. Uh, so over here, this is the uh, Fire Sands font I have in my file structure. I'm just going to grab the black and the reg, maybe bold actually, black and bold, 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 bold. Oh, it's right there. Cool. So I'm going to grab these, I'm going to drag them in, and I'm going to drop them into our assets. Now, I'm going to get both of it. Well, I'm going to create a new folder in here, and I'm going to call this fonts. I'm going to drag both the fonts inside of the fonts folder. And then inside of here, we're going to go up to our uh, our window. We're going to go to Text Mesh Pro, and we're going to open the font asset creator. Um, here you go. So this brings up this screen. We can select the source font, which we're going to choose Fire Sands Black. And we're just going to click Generate Font Atlas. Atlas, uh, and then we're just going to click save and we'll save that into fonts as that. Hit save, it's going to generate. Oh, it actually looks like it's done. So we're going to swap that out and go go bold, and then we're going to generate a new atlas and click save again and save that into the same folder. So now we have two new fonts we can actually use. So if we click on our text here, we should be able to now pick black or for this case, bold. Uh, I'm going to up the font size to about 48 that seems about right uh, 
to have a look in the scene view so we can actually see a bit better. Let's maybe auto size it. Yeah, you know, I think that's good there. So let's change the fur text color to white. Um, and I think that should be good. So save, go to game and let's hit play to see what this does. So if we hover over this, nothing's actually happening right now. And the reason for that is because our our button, our colour, we set that down to zero. Let's turn that back up to full. But on our normal colour, we're going to set that down to zero. And there you go. So now let's hit play. And this time we should hopefully see some colour hover over there. That's fine, but I don't think that looks right. Let's make this a 212121. And let's just set the, the opacity to about 25. There you go. And then the press color will be the same. So we're going to say 212121 and the press color about 50. And again, selected color can just be uh, 25 at 212121. There you go. So let's just hit play. And now if we hover over this, you can see, there you go, that looks a lot better. It's like a nice cell hover, and when you click it, you get that little click. So that's nice. Let's add in some more buttons now. So we've got play. Let's duplicate that, and let's create settings. Um, and we're going to go in here and change this to settings. Um, and on the settings actual button, we're going to add 75 or minus 75 from this to pull it underneath. There we go. We're in play mode. I hope that didn't save anything we just did. One second. Okay, there you go. We've got a new button called settings underneath the play. And we're going to duplicate that one last time. I'm going to say quit uh, just because I don't have any other button to actually do. Let's minus enough for 75 from here. So just say minus 75. And the text will say quit. There we go. So now in our play state, we should... We're able to hover over these and see the different hover states. We click them, you can see they do a quick highlight effect, um, which is really nice. So that's good. We have uh, we have a play, settings, and quit button. Let's add in a title quickly. So let's click a UI TextMess Pro. Uh, I'm going to set this to the top right, left. And we're going to set this width to about 1920 minus 480 which is about 1440. So in our scene, you can see that fits perfectly with our area here. We give it a height of about 200. We're gonna center both things. And in here, we're gonna say, uh, what's our game called? Should we call it My Awesome Game? Um, just right now, we can obviously set that auto size, about 72 to be fair, is about right. And let's change the font to black and I will also, is it character? Yeah, we're going to character space it by about 20. Maybe. Let's have a look. No, I don't like that. Let's not character 20 by 20. Let's say 10. And let's give this a really cool name. Say, super cool game. Super cool game. That's what we're naming it. Super cool game. Go in there. And I'm going to up the font size again. Just a bit of trial and error. Let's rename this to title. Uh, let's move this up here. And let's just go here. And the max, let's say 102. There you go. That's looking a lot better. It's nice and big. Now, this is cool. But in the title of this video, you may see that it says it's a parallax video. And now that's where we're going to code the background here to use a parallax. Um, so when we move our mouse, it will follow. So we probably need to update our pivots and stuff. But for now, let's go to our background. Let's click add component. And let's call this menu background or parallax background. Create an ad. And let's double click this to open this up in Visual Studio Code. Run this. So let's just delete everything in here for now. At the top here, we actually just need Unity Engine. We don't need the other two. So we're going to copy these. And we're going to say .ui so we can actually use UI elements. We're then going to get a vector 2, and this is going to be called our position. Uh, so I'm just going to be PZ. Um, we're then going to have a vector 2 again called start position. Um, and then we're going to have a serialized field, which is going to be an integer. That's going to be called our move modifier, which is going to be the speed at which our um, player moves now on start 
we're going to say start position is equal to our transform dot position of the current game object and then in update we're going to say vector 2 and we're going to create PC uh, and we're going to say camera is equal to camera dot main dot screen to viewport point also I just realized we don't actually need this here because we're setting it in here might as well uh, screen to viewport point and we'll just go past input dot mouse position so we're going to get our current mouse position and then we're going to create a float called position x and we're going to set this equal to math f dot lerp so what lerp does is it interplates between uh, two values so you can have a starting position and a b and then depending on the current time it will modify the value so let's say transform dot position dot x so we're going to get the x position and then we're going to get the start position dot x and we're going to plus p said dot x which is our mouse positions x and then we're going to times it by the move modifier and then in our last value here in our last uh, parameter we need the time to take so we're going to say two seconds and we need times that by time dot uh, delta time and now we're going to do the exact same, but we're going to call this position Y. And we're going to take the Y position, Y position, Y position, and hit save. So now we have the position Y. Now the final thing we need to do is say our current transform position needs to be equal to a new vector 3. And we'll give it the position X, we'll give it the position Y, and finally we're just going to give it 0 on the said axes because we don't need to change that up. Hit save, and that should be all we need for this file and we don't actually need unity engine ui for some reason i thought i was gonna have to get reference to the background there we go so that's all we need for this um file here so let's go back to our game let it load and as you can see down here we have a move modifier now i'm gonna set this to 20 by default uh we may need to modify this quite a bit but now if we hit start it's going to get our position and as you can see as we move our mouse the background is now moving with it so we have the play button settings button and quit button um that all allow us to move our mouse and we can see here now we can up this let's say something to like 50 and as you can see it gets a bit more wild but you gotta be careful because if we up this let's say 100 that's just one 100 you can see you can start going off screen with your image and you don't really want to do that um it probably isn't very good to start so what we're going to do is set this to about 50 i actually think 50 is a safe bet or maybe that's too much maybe even 30 and there you go you got the subtle background parallaxing uh set fay which i really like so the final thing we need to do is set up a way to swap our scenes from our current scene to our game scene um, and to do that we need to go into our file build settings and we need to drop our scene. So we have our game scene, but we also need to drop our menu scene. And we actually need to drop it before our game um, scene there. Just so we have that in there. So when we load up the game, um, it knows the scenes we can play with. So what we need to do is go and play. And we actually should create a menu manager. So let's create a new menu manager script which or object, which we're going to put in here. Reset that to transform zero. Let's add a component called menu manager hit enter save now let's just double click this to open it up in visual studio code again let's remove this and bring that up there and we're going to need using unity engine dot state management scene management that's what we need and in here we're going to create a public uh, void called change scene by name and then we're going to pass a string called name so we just need to say scene manager dot load scene and we're going to give it the name so that should load our scene by a name the issue here is i just think my omni sharp isn't working that should be fine now i believe that's correct Okay, so let's go back into here, let this compile, and there we go. So now on our play button, we're going to add a click event where we're going to drag our menu manager in. 
we're going to choose a function from our menu manager called uh, change scene by name and the scene we're going to change to is game. So let's just see here, our scene name is game and that is what we've added in there. So now if we hit play, we should be able to click on our play button and be taken to our game here where we can just start playing. There we go. So that is what all we're doing for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and as always, keep muddy, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Okay, guys, I forgot to mention, do not forget to join us in the Discord server. The link is in the description where you can join us and get involved with all the awesome stuff we're doing. And also, don't forget to check out my game, Banana Toss. The link is also in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.